the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. This is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Queen 921 City. Iconic song with Philly Joe and Kirby kicking off a Tuesday morning heading towards a Thanksgiving long weekend. Yeah, the name is Brian Anderson you were looking for, Phil from TBS on the uh, baseball call. Very I, good. I prefer Joe Smith. <laughs> Joe Smith's a great name, I'm telling you. When in doubt, you can always, you know, use that as an alias. Uh, Joe yeah. Smith. <laughs> but no, yeah, he's fantastic. And uh, it's just uh, baseball on all afternoon and night. And then you had football game last night. Hockey kicks off tonight. Excellent. Yeah. I mm. can't tell you this. He is not the play-by-play guy for the City 500. Mm. That is coming up on Thursday, a couple of days away. I stopped in at Krispy Kreme yesterday, by the way. Picked up a couple of dozen before I hit uh, Super Lube on Provence. Mm. Were, were you just, uh, you know, trying to prepare yourself for the City 500 by picking up some donuts yesterday? Combination. I couldn't cross the line p- past Provence <laughs> and Archibald to get into Transcona. It's almost like I felt like Clint Eastwood in the mule. <laughs> You're bringing stuff over the border. Yeah. But I couldn't get across. It was like a practice uh, lap. It was but, like a practice lap for the City 500 going into Krispy Kreme yesterday. I know Phil's made this mention before. But I will tell you this, you can't go anywhere without putting a smile on somebody's face if you bring in a box of donuts Boom. somewhere. You don't even have to know the people. Mm. You can walk in randomly to any business today and bring in a box of donuts, and all of a sudden you become hero of the day. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, like you draw anywhere, anywhere yeah. you go, donuts, Timbits, bring a coffee to someone. It's the subtlest gesture, but it goes yeah. so far. 100%. Yeah. And yeah. who doesn't like, you know, free food or. And, and these are donuts, case, donuts. Yeah. Like, so I, I be honest, sometimes people bring free food in, and I'm pretty picky. Uh, I'm not. I'm walking away. But a donut? <laughs> never a, walked away. That's a for sure. I actually, yesterday, it was pretty funny, actually, because I've never seen this before. So I brought two boxes, one of the original glaze from Krispy Kreme, and the other one was the assorted. Mm. And they ask at the, at the drive-thru if uh, you'd like to pick the assorted. No, nah, nah, you pick. It's like uh, lottery numbers. Just pick. Mm. So I brought them in. And, and one gentleman, he was so excited, opened the one box, committed to the original glaze, and goes, oh, wait a second, and opened the other box with his other hand and grabbed an assorted. He had the two, he had two going at the same time. He two <laughs> Double fisted. fisting. I've never seen that before donuts. with donuts. Have you? Uh, Not donuts. Usually you'll eat one and then wander back over and grab another, but one yes. in each hand is a bold move. That was yeah. a full walk away. He yeah. looked like John Wayne as a gunslinger. <laughs> I don't blame him, though. He was just trying to secure the, the goods yeah. because he, he wasn't going to risk it going back for that second donut mm. and it being gone. You got it. So I'll tell you what, here's your chance to buy your own dozen or two. The City 500 Thursday, Canad Inns, Transcona, all in support of Silo Mission, all $15 on that box will go directly to them, Phil. And we've got, uh, we'll have our street team out there because I was, I was laying it out for my wife yesterday. Hey, give yourself a few extra minutes because she would drive by there every morning on her way to yeah. work. Bring two, three dozen I actually said four, but she's like, four dozen for my office? There's not enough of us for four dozen. Mm-hmm. I said, well, then bring the rest home. Anyway, I was telling I see them. what you were doing there. Yes. You, you were trying to get some coming back home. Yeah, I pushed her on a Smart great move. cause. Yeah, yeah, you got you to gotta make sure some are coming home. So, yeah, plan on Friday morning. Or Thursday. Thursday, Thursday sorry. morning. Yeah. You wait till Friday. You're going to be <laughs> SOL. Deals. <laughs> this yes, is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Well, then get the f*** off Twitter and call the bone phone. Don't make me look up from my phone. 780 Bone. Brought to you by Auto Gallery of Winnipeg. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I bought a newer SUV, and I've got the LED headlights. And uh, honestly, I'd say about 25% of the people in oncoming traffic flash their brights at me because they think I have my brights on. And I don't. I flash my brights at them to show I don't. But of that 25%, about 10 or 15% of those people will just hammer on their brights. And doing a, d- a dick move. Like, I'm not trying to do anything to you. It's just it's the new lights. It's, in 15 years, all the lights are going to be this way. The government's already looked in, and, like, the regulatory body has said that these lights are the way it's going to be going. So stop being a dick and stop hammering your brights at me. I'm not trying to blind you. I can't turn them off. <laughs> so someone needs to tell me why we need to go to lights like this. There's got to be a safety reason, but I just look at it like they're distracting for drivers coming at you. Well, the street lights are dimmer. We've talked about that. Mine uh, aren't even on in St. B this, this oh, week. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, that's a whole different issue. Yeah, you're right. But with the dimness there, 
And it is a problem because, I mean, you you drive into some of these lights the, that are going on yeah. right now, and it's like blinding. So I've done it. I've actually flashed my uh, high beams and then realized, oops, mm-hmm. this guy doesn't have his high beams on. So I just avoid it now. I yeah. will say being in one of those newer vehicles with the brighter lights on the highway at night is nicer. Oh yeah, for driving. Yeah, yeah. If you're the if you're the one driving that vehicle, yeah, yeah coming right. the yeah, other way, you're you like, can oh, see more. All of a sudden, like. you got an SPF sixty. You need to put on your forehead <laughs> as you're driving the other way. How'd you get the tan, huh? It's coming the other way, and some guy with his LED headlights. We had a call. Uh, I want to say within the last couple of weeks, somebody talking about the amount of time they lose on their way to work driving behind slow drivers. If somebody going 20 to 30 kilometers an hour slower than the speed limit is going to make you late for work, you need to leave earlier for work. Mm-hmm. The slow driving conversation, right? It never ends. And here's another one. Good morning, Sir Rodney here. This is for all you people that are saying, oh, this guy passed me on the perimeter doing 156, and then I pulled up to the light right beside him. So what's the point? <laughs> the point is, I still beat you to that light. <laughs> I love that laugh. Uh, Okay, talking yesterday about a possible emergency in this studio. I was saying, you know, uh, someday, Curbs, it's going to happen. Whether it's Joe or myself, you better know how, you better know uh, your uh, first date. Mm -hmm. And that brought up, you you said, uh, like, you know your first date. And what was it, the first thing you say to someone? Is are you okay, bro? Are you okay, bro? Well, you got to check in on the person yeah. first. Yeah, well, you're right, Kerbs. Walker, Texas Ranger of all people, wants to weigh in. Hey, you guys, Walker, Texas Ranger here. I was just uh, listening this morning about uh, uh, what you need to ask or look for if somebody's having uh, a medical emergency. If the person's coherent, yes, you ask them if they're all right. If the person's not coherent, you need to check their ankles and their wrists looking for uh, any kind of a diabetic or a, 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 a bracelet that notifies them of a medical mm. issue they might have before you do anything. Because if somebody's got diabetes or they, they've got some sort of a, a reaction to certain things, they're going to have a bracelet on either their ankle or their elbow. Or not <laughs> elbow, wrist. Anyways, just thought you guys should know that. Have a good one. They got an elbow uh, wrist or a bracelet or uh, a pad. They're probably either a professional wrestler or athlete. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, I understand the whole checking for a medical bracelet, but I'm pretty sure if the person's unconscious, my next move, and I'm just speaking on what I know, is to check for a pulse or if they're breathing, not for a medical bracelet. <laughs> I'm not going to be administering anything to, to harm that person if they do have a medical mm. alert bracelet. I, I, I just need to know, like, if they're not able to tell me if they're all right, mm-hmm. your next move is to make sure that they're breathing and that they have a pulse. CPR, baby. Yeah, get in there. You know what? I feel better being in your hands over mm-hmm. the last two I days, I told Kirby. you guys, you don't have to worry. I got you. Yeah, Thank well, you. That's good. That's good. We're, <laughs> you're pretty close to a nurse. That's what we're learning. Well, let's so, not get ahead of ourselves. Paramedic. <laughs> As close as we have in this room (laughs) to a medical attendant. The Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. True romance. From that soundtrack, James Gandolfini comes in the room, Brad Pitt. Somebody will correct me if I have any of these details wrong because it's an iconic cult classic. Gandolfini's looking for Christian Slater's character. He goes into the apartment. And uh, Brad Pitt's smoking a bowl. And uh, Gandolfini's like, where's your buddy at? And Brad Pitt famously goes, you want to smoke a bowl to this, like, terrifying monster with a shotgun? And the guy's like, no, man, where's your buddy at? And Brad Pitt tells him where his buddy's at because he doesn't know any better. He did answer. Yeah, he did answer. He did answer. That's good acting. Yep. And that song's playing. (laughs) That's why I always place that song in the movie True Romance. It's Philly Joe and Kirby at 6.50. Your memory, like, I, it's unbelievable when it comes to pop culture, like movies and that. Mm-hmm. I can't remember this stuff, but now I, I always get this. I got to go back and watch it. Mm. So I'm going to have to go back and watch True Romance. Why do you think that? Sorry, Kirby, I, I see you want to jump in here, but why do you think that is, like, our brains are wired as, as certain ways? Because, like, you never, ever, you don't forget a name. You don't forget a date. 
But a guy like me, I can't barely remember my kids' birthdays, my anniversary, but I remember that a scene out of a movie yeah. like that. I don't know how that works. I think it hits on like uh, emotion and maybe like your attachment to the movie that you're watching because I don't remember a lot of things, but like there's one specific movie that I know Freebird plays at the very end. It's a, a Rob Zombie movie. Anyways, what I a can, memory! I know. I can't remember the name of the movie, but it's got Rob Zombie I just attached laughing, to it. Because you were telling us about how you remember, but but, but you I just don't remember, remember the scene of the car riding off. No, yeah, no, while no. Freebird no. plays in the background, yeah. and it's just one of those scenes yeah. that yeah. sticks out in your memory, whether you remember the actual title of the movie or not. Someone right. will tell us the movie. Yeah, Someone. no, for sure they will. But listen. Phil's got that uncanny movie sense where he needed to work in a video store when he was younger. You know what I mean? Like I when would you, have been good at that. You would have been great yes. at it. When you walk up and you go, hey, listen, we're down to our last copy of 26 copies <laughs> of, you know, uh, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark or something. But Phil would give you a, hey, do you remember in this movie, blah, blah, blah. And then the guy will go, oh, yeah, you know what? That's pretty cool. Maybe I'll grab that this weekend. Yeah. Be that- kind. Rewind on the way out, right? If I could go back in time. I'd work at a movie store. You'd be great. I would love that. Minimum wage just (laughs) went up. (laughs) You would have gotten a raise. Devil's Rejects is the movie. Such a great scene. That uncanny memory of yours, Kirby. Thank you (laughs) very much. Philly, Joe, Kirby. Philly, Joe, and Kirby. Podcast. The Philly, Joe, and Kirby Podcast. Oh, you're telling me it's National Pierogi Day? I just read that. Mm -hmm. And, (laughs) And the first thing my head was thinking about on how many wonderful places we have in this province or people that make pierogies. And I'll tell you a quick story because it's not the only time you'll ever hear this story. Usually when you hear something around, uh, let's say, um, a bazaar or a church banquet or something, and you hear the word Ukrainian involved, Mm -hmm. and you hear that uh, it's a fall supper or something, and then you go, wow, wow. What a dinner this was. There's somebody at that table of about 20 people in that church basement that will tell you that those women right over there, and they'll point over to the one side Uh that are the last to eat, just made (laughs) 7,232 pierogies in a day and a half. So you could stuff your face, and they have all different types. But that story has been told a million times. Oh, yeah. And it's the hardest thing. Like They're working with their hands all day. To make these wonderful things called oh, pierogies. Oh, and, and I savor every single one of them. Don't you. you worry. Mm-hmm. And you start to look at the, so obviously you've got the, the those ladies who make the pierogies, oh. the church ladies, They and those are marvelous. But then you start going like Savala's out in Transco. Yes, the stores. Outstanding, pierogi planet. And I've just discovered this. So my kid is playing out of Dakota Community Center this year more than ever. Like, oh, wow. And I've been to Dakota before, but now that I'm spending more time there, like my youngest, I just realized that they serve pierogies at their canteen. They have a marvelous Are canteen. Are you kidding? And every time I, I was at his practice last night, and I was waiting for him afterwards. Way too long, by the way. Why do kids take so long getting out of the dress room? But anyway. What do you was, care if you can have pierogies? Well, I didn't have any, but oh. the family in front of me was chowing down on some pierogies. In those containers? And I looked at them, and I said, now I got to get In a container, like a plastic container. Oh. Were they deep fried? I, you know what? I have never had them there. I don't know how they make them. Because most of the time, I would imagine in like a place like that, they're going to be deep fried. I hope so. Yeah. That is really the is best. Is that your favorite way to eat a pierogi, deep Absolutely. fried? Absolutely. I like it crispy. with onions yeah. with some butter in and a pan. Ba- not- and bacon. Yeah. See, mine need to be yeah. a little bit, uh, like I don't mind a little crisp, like a pan yeah. fried. Yes. Pan yes. fried is the best because you get a little crisp, like but you that. also get a little bit of the consistency of the dough. Mm-hmm. The word boiled doesn't even sound sexy. But I'll eat them. I, of course I you will. will. Like, like a hot dog, you're going to eat it. <laughs> if it's I know, all I got, I will eat boiled pierogies. It's not pierogis. really the first option. Uh, I'm f- going to be honest, Phil. The last time I had pierogies was when we did that challenge before Joe joined the show. Oh, man. And uh, From Pierogi Planet. They yeah. were good. We tried to attempt to eat 26 pierogies in, in, in the morning. Mm-hmm. I think we got to like, I don't know, I think I made it to like six or seven. You made it to like maybe ten. It's not an optimal time of day to try to do a pierogi <laughs> challenge. The morning. The morning, like, it just it's didn't. It's been a while since I've looked at pierogies because I'm just like, man, that was something. I had them at a golf tournament, 
And I thought that was brilliant for a whole sponsor mm. to have like pierogi planet there making mm, pierogies yes. and you walk by, it's like a finger food, right? But yeah. they give you the container in a plastic <laughs> fork and it didn't A little matter. sour cream. Oh, yeah. Got to have, okay, sauteed onions, bacon. You got to have bacon it. bacon in the mix. I got to have that. Yeah. I, I, I like to douse a bunch of butter on there butter. more than sour cream, to be honest. What about some shredded cheddar on top of the pierogies? Nah. That'll work, give or, too. Give or take. No, mm. no, for sure. I'm okay on the cheese. You don't the want che- the cheese I like cheese the cheese on inside the pierogi. But you don't oh, want- yeah, mixed with the potato. Let me tell you, if I have shredded cheddar in the fridge, You're gonna it put winds it on up anything. going on everything. So pierogies, yeah, sure. I just, you know, when you talk about shredded cheese, Phil, I just imagine you standing at the fridge. Eating it? With like that chips? With it, yeah, right, and it's like <laughs> dripping all down the front of you there's cheese yep. shreds all over the kitchen floor and you're just like mm. half are making it into your mouth and half are on your beard yeah you know why he moved to shredded cheese because the first time he brought about brought a brick home and tried to <laughs> oh he shredded his knuckles more than the it's cheese a lot of work. so i go with the shredded too phil it's how you, safer how do you cook your pierogies and yeah so what do you prefer the air fryer is good too and what well, do you got? I, yeah. You know what? I haven't even tried the air fryer in terms of the pierogies. Do you think people will tell us where their favorite pierogies are as well, well? I'll tell you what. Tell us what you put on your pierogies. Tell us how you cook your pierogies. Tell us where you buy your pierogies. There's going to be a lot of pierogies eaten this weekend with Thanksgiving. Yeah. Let me ask you this, because your kids are in sports. Isn't there, I, I do believe it's happened, where there's people that have done pierogi buying as fundraisers. Sure. You can I, buy them by the bag. I got a bag in the freezer from a fundraiser last winter. Still. Still good. Yeah. Oh, how do you like your pierogies? Oh, with frost built up around them. <laughs> the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. It's Philly Joe and Kirby. And Kirby, you had something you wanted to ask us about socks. Yeah, like I was doing laundry on the weekend and I was like, man, does anybody else just like hang on to their like uh, unpaired socks? Like maybe you're putting your socks together and pairing them up for the drawer. And then you're just like, why, why, why am I missing? Socks. Well, that's one thing I seem to get uh, into. Like, Christy will do the laundry mm-hmm. overall because uh, I've got Kyle downstairs in the basement when he's around. <laughs> but yet the laundry always seems to be around. He makes it around for that. <laughs> and then I'll do the folding because I can have football on on Sunday. Oh, you and I can fold. the folding. I'll fold. Yeah. And I don't mind folding. So uh, And it helps Christy because she's doing about four loads of laundry on a Sunday, right? So... I'm folding, but it comes to socks. The biggest dilemma I have is I know my socks, but I don't know mm. all of Kyle's <laughs> socks, and I don't know all of Christy's socks, and then I start folding them, and then Stewie, my dog, starts grabbing at the socks, and then he starts running around with socks. So sometimes when there's a lost sock, I don't know if it's stuck in the uh, dryer, if it's stuck in Stewie's mouth and he's hidden it somewhere. Or it's the one lone sock that will never be found on the table. So I keep them all. Mm. Just yeah, in I, case. I, sorry to give you a long answer on that, no, that but was, I keep them all. That was a lot of uh, there was a lot of thought into that answer about uh, socks, Joe, but I appreciate it. I keep all my socks. Like if my wife wants to chuck one or she'll say, hey, you know, you're missing. I don't care. Keep them all in there because my theory is they'll eventually turn up. Like where yes. could they be? They're in the house somewhere. But here's the other thing now. I have OCD, so I match my socks. There's no changing. I, I kind of figured. But the kids, <laughs> surprised the ki- you don't get your socks dry cleaned. No kid. Hey, <laughs> I thought about it. No, I haven't. Just the dress uh, socks. But I will say this: kids will change their socks. Like uh, as far as one could be yellow stripe, one could be orange stripe. Oh, you mean like and the wear same type of sock? Mismatched socks. Mm, mismatched socks. Oh yeah, my youngest so does that. Yeah. That makes it even harder to pair. Sometimes. I feel like Phil would wear mismatched socks. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I, if I, no, I can't Fox, do it. If I can't find, <laughs> no, I Joe can't. can't do it. <laughs> no, it'll ruin my <laughs> day. Like we're asking him to eat broccoli. <laughs> it'll ruin. Do it. it'll no, ruin. I could see that. Oh, that no. would really bother Joe. <laughs> it would. <laughs> I, I never realized that OCD to a cousin of mine said it's a family trait. I said, oh god. Have they handed down nothing of good? I remember we were on location as the morning show at one of those nice uh, lotto homes. And I remember we were taking a photo with Milt Stiegel. And uh, do you remember I had like ugly socks on? Yes. And you guys all had really nice socks. Yes. And I'll never forget that. Like Mm. I, since then, have really upped my sock game. (laughs) Because I never want to be in that situation. If if there's a situation like that, like if there's a house party that you're at, or uh, in that case where we were out as a show, I make sure the socks... I got half decent socks on. I'm going to tell you right now, if we're ever stuck here at work late in the afternoon and I say to Phil, even you, Kirby, now with the socks, I said, hey, 
impromptu. Let's get to Itchy Ben. Where you got to take <laughs> off your shoes. I'm telling you right now. You never know when that's going to happen. Make sure you got good socks. You it's not like know. going to the doctors where you need the good underwear. <laughs> and as mom used to say, remember, make sure you got good underwear on in case you have to go to the doctors today. What? <laughs> Socks with a hole, though, get those out no, of my no. life immediately. I don't, want, I don't oh, want socks. Oh, I can't handle yeah. that. When they start to, like, even even the slightest separation yeah. in the sock, they're gone. Bye but bye. have you had a situation where you didn't know you had a hole in a sock until you took the shoe off because mm. it just happened and you're in public? Oh, that's humiliating. Yeah, I don't like Might that. Might as well go home. I can't do this. I can't yeah. be here anymore. <laughs> Why did he leave? He's got a hole in his sock. <laughs> oh, That's a perfectly good God. excuse, I think. I don't know. That's PJK Extra. <laughs> This yes. is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Being told that the uh, pierogies at Dakota Community Center, thank you very much to the person who called in. I should have got their name. Anyhow, uh, are f- like authentic, authentic, because it's a refugee family from Ukraine that make those pierogies. That's great. Oh, my gosh. Talk about a hookup. I oh, thought yeah. it was either him or Jonathan Taves, now that he's retired, <laughs> coming back to the Dakota <laughs> Community <laughs> Club. No, that's a great story. It is. I love it. Um, and we're getting, because it is National Pierogi Day, we're getting a lot of uh, opinions on the best pierogies, how to make pierogies. Oh, my gosh, I'm getting hungry. My buddy uh, Milan just texted me this, and it's, it's a, this is brilliant. It's Mom's Pierogies on Sinclair Street in the North End, right? Yep. And then, of course, he has to put, not my mom, but what a great name. <laughs> hey, where are these? Ah, these are my mom's pierogies. So you don't have to <laughs> yeah. tell them the street name, but what a great name. Yeah. A lot of people got church hookups, you know? They've got... Yes, uh, that's key. That's yeah. what we were talking about. Yeah, they've got somebody that they go to uh, that bakes them in a, a ton of butter. Butter is crucial oh, to any recipe. Yeah. Well, this, this on the Boston Pizza text line, a dollop of butter, pierogi sliced onions, with pieces of bacon wrapped in the tin foil on the barbecue. Oh. I wouldn't even have thought of that. And a bunch of lactate tablets, too. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hurt. Just in case. Uh, Just in case. Uh, West End Pierogies in Crestview, the best homemade pierogi shop, hands down. West End. Mm-hmm. In Damn. Crestview, okay. Somebody saying you got to give the Polish... They're oh, yeah, yeah. on pierogies you as do? well. That is very true. My mm-hmm. apologies. Yeah. I mean, it goes both both cultures. Well, it, I mean, it's a, apparently if you Google pierogi, it's a whole Eastern Europe thing, right? So mm-hmm. Savalas and Transconas come up numerous times, obviously. It's very good. Well, they'll see you in the lineup on Christmas <laughs> Eve. <laughs> they have yeah. Every year. Every year Christmas comes, Phil's there on Christmas Eve. They run out. Like they yeah. and they're lined up out the door every single Christmas. You got to go. Like I now know. I I now know that you got to go earlier in December if you want your pick of the loot. He got confused last year. He lined up there on Valentine's Day instead of Florist. Wow, that's romantic. Hey, that's my wife appreciated book. that. No kidding. Instead of chocolate, she did. Philly Joe Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Useless question. Useless with a capital Y. Oh, so useless. Brought to you by Midtown Ford. The Trues coming to Winnipeg February 7th at the uh, Club Regent Event Center. Mm-hmm. Never a bad show. The Trues, I bet you, you know, I've probably seen them seven times in my life. I think I'm up there as I, well. Most people have. If you like, if you like, uh, you know, rock and roll, and you like going to see good Canadian bands, the Trues are an option a couple times a year. I honestly think most festivals that I've gone to as well, they can you can find them featured yes. in there. Tickets go on sale Thursday at Ticketmaster. We're beating the box office right now. Pre-sale tomorrow, by the way. Just take down the word ready, R-E-A-D-Y, if you want to get in on the pre-sale. But you're absolutely right. When have you ever had a bad time at a true show? (laughs) Never. So good. Guaranteed. This is the second most common thing that kids stick up their nose. We're going to talk about kids and what they stick up their nose this morning. Wow. What is the second most common thing? Harder to Google. Uh, you you do that. You get tricky so that people can't Google it. 780 City, good morning. Hi. Um, can I get a lifeline with Philly, please? Yeah. Phil, you've got two kids. The second most common thing that they've stuck up their nose, or you have. Let's go with a pencil. Eraser end. That's a great answer, but you know what? It's not in the top five. Oh, wow. Sorry about that. <laughs> For sure. Who hasn't done the pencil walrus joke? Right. 
as a kid. Ha-ha. You know, that's true, yeah. So funny, guaranteed laughs. For, <laughs> that's it. For Trues, beat the box office. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Hello. How old are you? Nine. Wow. Nine. What's your name? Aiden. Aiden, you could be an expert with this question. <laughs> the second most common thing that a kid has stuck up their nose. Legos. Legos. That's a good answer, too. Number five. Wow. You cracked the top five, Aiden. Aiden, don't put any Legos or pencils no. in your nose no, at school no. today, okay? Okay. Okay, you have a good day. I will. Okay, bye. <laughs> no. What a great kid. No kidding. 780 City, hello there. Hello. You got a guess for us? I'm going to go with a P. A P? A P? Let me see here. Better in my nose than my mouth. Never liked peas. I love peas. Number four, my friend. Mm, that's very good. You didn't like peas, Phil? You know what? I'll, I didn't like them. I'll eat them like in the, what do you call, pods? Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that raw. Was, raw raw with some You don't want sauce, them cooked. But I don't like them cooked. Yeah, that's You okay. do the snap peas, that became a thing. I used to hide them under my plate and my mom would find them. <laughs> you can't fool me, she'd say. Eat those peas. Hide them under the well, plate. Well, there was a little know. crevice underneath yeah, yeah. the plate. I put them in there. You're a smart man. Mm. They start rolling off the table. <laughs> yeah. Number four. So, listen. Aiden got Lego at number five. Peas at number four. Hi, City. Neither. What's the uh, question again? This is the second most common thing that kids will stick up their nose. Um, crayons. No, hmm. no, not in the top five. But that would make like sense, Simpson, too. I guess, eh? yeah. Pardon me? Like Homer Simpson. Homer Simpson. Oh, yeah, the old Homer deal, for sure. Yeah, have a good day. Crayons make sense. Yeah. Sometimes they smell good. Hi, City. <laughs> Uh, how about French fries? French fries is number two. <laughs> That's the old walrus, <laughs> yeah. walrus trick, too. Fries. Thanks. Why would you waste two good fries, oh, though? Oh, man. Yeah. 780 City, Trues tickets. Beat the box office on the line this morning. Go ahead. Is it uh, their finger? Not their finger. Great answer. <laughs> is that like that's got to be in there? No, nope. no, it wasn't top five. Huh. Hi. Hi. How about some bubble gum? Not bubble Oof. gum. Oh, no. Man. I would have thought that would have been a top five answer, Don't too. do that as an adult. It sticks to all the hair in your nose. Oh, God. That's Unless you're trying to... to pull them out, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> Get them out, yeah. yeah. 780 City, 780, 2484. Hello. Hi. Hello. Would it, a, would it be a straw? Not a straw. Hmm. Another, uh. another good answer. Yeah. Look, I can blow bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hello. Hey, uh, can I get a lifeline? Sure, Philly or Kirby. Uh, let's go Philly today. A marble. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, boys and girls, children of all ages, marbles, the second most common thing that kids stick up their nose, french fries, Cheerios mm. is oh, on the yeah. list. That'd be a tough one to pull out there with the hole in the middle. <laughs> Peace. Have to go Start and, whistling. Have to, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Lego were the top five answers. Oh, marbles. man. I just remember playing. I don't think kids play marbles anymore. No, not like... No. Uh, no, but I'll tell you a, a, a quick story. I've got about a four or five-year-old down the street from us, and Christy found a jar of marbles in the garage. And they were just talking, and he said, oh, look, I have a marble. And she goes, I have a jar of marbles for you. And we never met up with the kid, but he remembered for, like, a whole summer. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, hey, I still got to come by and get those marbles. She said, I'll leave them on the edge of the driveway, so when you're pulling your wagon past the house, you make sure you pick uh, up the marbles. So I saw the kid. The he marbles. made sure, yeah, and he plays with his marbles all the time. Aww. Did he get them stuck in his nose? No, he hasn't. Okay, and don't get me started, because <laughs> now I'm going to panic that that happened with the kid. I don't need the anxiety. The Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. You put a call in? You need, I think it's time, like you, so Joe still hasn't figured out who's patching into his Bluetooth by accident. This is the best. This is the hot tub Bluetooth. So Joe's, I just want you to visualize this. Joe's in there with a rum and all of a sudden he starts hearing what people down the street are, are, are watching on their Bluetooth. Like, like the Big Bang Theory verse. <laughs> that happened on Saturday. I was out and my wife uh, noticed, but last night I was out. And uh, my wife gave me a call that uh, the kid and his girlfriend were using the hot tub. Mm. And out of nowhere, you're sitting in the hot tub just relaxing. And out of nowhere, all of a sudden, the news pops on. (laughs) Someone's watching. (laughs) That would be terrible. 
fire. Girl. Like out of nowhere, and you can't adjust the volume on this thing because it's oh somebody else's God. feed that is leaking into our Bluetooth. So they're sitting in there, and all of a sudden, the news from television is running in the. Um, so can I make a suggestion? She's sitting across from you. She's very. I, I don't want to call you nosy, but you're very good oh at getting. God. You're good at getting details. I could see you. Are you watching the news right now? Like going door to door on behalf of Joe to figure out who's who is patching into his Bluetooth. Well, well, Christy did. She went to one of the neighbors, and they realized that the Bluetooth. Kirby was helping me off the air, but with the Bluetooth, <laughs> they were able to access the Bluetooth for that speaker, which is attached to the hot tub. So, so I have anybody to figure out could dial into that from thing. that area. So we can't tell which house it's coming from. So I put a call into somebody that um, is a tech mm. for hot tubs, but I don't know the answer yet. So I just somehow outside of shutting the breaker off and restarting it to reset it because somebody will leak in. Can you put a password or a block on a Bluetooth? I've never heard you could. I th- like I, I have more questions technical for You're gonna, you off I, air but well no because i'm, I'm, I'm actually gonna help him off air with like a few things because okay. there's gotta be like, my friend it, there's gotta be a way to figure Number this one, out buddy. but i will say i i do like to leave uh notes and signs for people oh yeah you know uh and so in this case i think that we could uh use the photocopier here at work joe and we'll make signs that you can put around the neighborhood that's actually like, good like are you Tapping into my Wi-Fi or my Bluetooth. Staple it on trees with, next to the missing cat. With pictures of your face. Hi, I'm Joe Aiello. <laughs> Are you accidentally using my Bluetooth? I'm telling you, it's going to make a difference. Well, the difference is it's not a mobile speaker. It's attached to your the hot, hot tub, tub inside, so I have to take the hot tub down. But I don't know if there's any switch on it. There can't be. I'm going to go by your house one of these nights. Please come before by. Before you get this fixed. No, I'm going to park like oh right in front God. of your house start making phone calls <laughs> with the hope that it'll patch in. Oh, and you just sure. hear me on phone Not calls. Not even phone night. calls. You can you just do, do the playlist, like yes. some weird songs like... Here I go again on my own. That's, that's not a weird not song. A, well, no, just song. like blasting out of nowhere. Oh, why don't you just sit in the hot tub, at least enjoy it while you're there. I got a better idea of something I'll crank through your Bluetooth <laughs> <laughs> for the whole neighborhood to hear. <laughs> wow. Where's that coming from? <laughs> <laughs> this yes. is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. I don't buy the school supplies, but I'm pretty sure Kirby. Really? Kirby yeah. <laughs> Surprise. Kirby wow. uh, off air was asking me about a calculator. Do my kids uh, use this fancy calculator now? And Well, I just remember when you kind of get into those older years in school and you start taking more interesting things in math class. I remember we had to go out and get this. We had to buy like a, a yeah. fancy calculator. And I, I was mm. thinking the other day, I wonder if kids still have to do that because yeah. technically... D- doesn't the calculator on your phone do no and, and phones kids in school? Have, I, I guess I guess that would be a good point. So I saw this big fancy calculator on the counter around like the first day of school. School supplies were all piled in the counter, and I did see one. So uh, mm. I, for sure, my oldest, grade eight now, he is he is using that. If he needs a chemistry or biology uh, book. From way back in the day, you can have mine. It's brand new. You know Never what? been cracked. I can tell you that for think, a fact. I think they might have updated the curriculum. Yeah. But, well, this uh, one's still brand new. <laughs> bring it in. Bring it in. By the way, can I quickly say, and I've been looking for a moment to do this all morning, happy birthday to my wife, Stacy. It's her birthday today. Aw, yeah. Stacy. Hold on a second. I had six birthdays listed on my Facebook page today. You just messed with today, this day, Phil. Including my mother-in-law, Sam. It's her birthday today. And I don't see any Stacy on my face. Do you know who? Joe. He gets upset when he misses someone's birthday. Uh-oh, it's part Joe. of his morning. You screw with his day. I Philly. cover the boys every year. You do. You never miss it. How the hell do I not have Stacy? This is going right in my phone. It better be your birthday It's called today. a scientific calculator, sure? by the way. Just saying <laughs> Are you sure? sure? <laughs> I'm telling you what <laughs> <laughs> oh, Can you imagine? Oh, no, sorry. That's if a- I'm wrong, oh, man, I'm in trouble. <laughs> For more Philly Joe and Kirby, lock it into 921 City weekday mornings, 6 to 10.